we should probably talk about this speaker debacle. So let's get into that really briefly. Um, so Steve Scalise, despite winning the closed door secret ballot, um, has dropped out of the speaker race, even though a majority of the Republicans in the private meeting supported him. But it was not by much. Reportedly, it was a 14 vote vote um, differential in terms of uh, who the Republican caucus wanted to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, Jim Jordan is now the 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 clear uh, front runner because Scalise has dropped out now that and he was the one who was uh, second to Scalise in that 14 vote differential. And there was just this weird New York Times article about it, about how Scalise allies, quote, openly wept in the meeting when he dropped out. And there is this issue here because mainstream Republicans, the ones who are also in purple districts who feel the most um, vulnerable going into 2024, when abortion is going to be on the ballot, when Trump is the likely nominee, they're terrified about the Trump endorsed Jim Jordan leading the party in the House. And um, some of them I saw quoted in The Times, Representative Ann Wagner of Missouri uh, called Jordan's candidacy a, quote, non-starter. Um, Don Bacon of Nebraska, Biden won his district, uh, said that he was worried and, and um, wanted Steve Scalise essentially to, to, to stick with it and was concerned about Jim Jordan. So it's still not even a given that with the field cleared that Jordan is going to be able to get enough votes because a reminder, it doesn't matter if a majority of the caucus, the Republican caucus, feels a certain way about um, about a candidate to be speaker because it's about the House. The House votes on it. And all re- Democrats, hopefully, I mean, I can't imagine that they would be this idiotic, but, but, they've, <laughs> but they've proven me wrong in the past. Um, all Democrats will vote in opposition. So you need almost in the entire Republican caucus, because that margin's around five votes, right, Bradley? Five votes with everybody involved. And I know that there are two uh, vacancies currently, uh, one on each end. Okay, okay. David Cicilline, the Democrat in Rhode Island, is it's vacant. And then Chris Stewart, Republican in Utah, is vacant. So it's one on both sides. Gotcha. Okay, so um, those are the the battle lines here. And it seems like the caucus is meeting again today to, to, to vote for, for Jim Jordan. And we'll, we will have more information soon. Um, but uh, is this the David Gregory clip? Which one is this, Bradley? No, so, the, so you said you mentioned Don Bacon, and this is just a brief clip of, of Don Bacon responding to CNN's Manu Raju about um, what he thinks might happen to people like him in his type of district. And also Austin Scott, a Republican of Georgia, talking about the situation, who is kind of a uh, leadership ally. Gotcha. All right, let's hear this. Putting district like yours at risk. Yeah, it does. It's these guys want to be in the minority. That's exact. I think they would prefer that because they can just vote no and yell and scream all the time. And uh, but governing, you gotta you gotta work together. It's a tough scenario, but there there are people in there that are honorably trying to get to the right place, and then there are people in there, as you know, that like to go on the TV and uh, are not necessarily negotiating for anything other than TV time. How does that make you guys look? It makes us look like a bunch of idiots. That's hilarious. Um, But I'm now seeing that Manu Raju 15 minutes ago says Austin Scott has declared against Jim Jordan in the run for speaker to run. run. Can you confirm that? Because, again, this is all I mean, they met at 10 a.m. So as I'm doing, we're doing the reading for the show, which goes on on at 12. Not not all this information is going to be out there. So that guy, the second speaker is running against Jim Jordan for speaker. And, and and that seems even more doomed just from my immediate reaction than Steve Scalise, who had a, a history, a long history of being in leadership um, and was the, the number two behind more ways than one. Hey, um, sorry. Uh, behind, it's a long week. Um, behind uh, behind uh, Kevin McCarthy at the time. So in terms of like the traditional structure, it would have been him. But and apparently the ca- a majority of that caucus wanted it to be him. But Trump endorsed Jim Jordan. So it's got to be Jim. It's got to be Jim. 
I, I don't think this Austin Scott thing is going to work out, but it does mean that there's going Literally, to be more chaos. Literally, I've never chaos. heard of Austin Scott. Yes. He's, he's like a very anonymous <laughs> Georgia backbencher, like <laughs> extremely juiceless. Yeah. Sounds like a second baseman for the Nationals. <laughs> so so uh, good luck with that, uh, Austin. But it seems like eventually it'll be Jim Jordan. It's just what is Jim Jordan going to concede? Um, what is Jim Jordan going to concede? It'll be a different constituency that he has to concede to here. The difference is, is that when Kevin McCarthy wanted to be speaker, he had to work with the Matt Gates crowd, um, who basically got, after 15 rounds of voting, in their agreement, an option to pull, do a vote anytime they wanted <laughs> to remove him as speaker. That's how power-hungry McCarthy was, and he agreed to that. And look what happened. Matt Gates did it. I think that at some level, McCarthy just wanted the power and just put compartmentalize it and thought that, no, a member wouldn't do that and sow such chaos within our caucus for absolutely no reason. Well, looks like it did, because the, the thing that someone like Representative Bacon there does not understand is that the Republican Party doesn't care about governing. <laughs> um this is they got all this money um getting attention in opposition exactly um they even when they're their most well-oiled machine they want government to break down the only th purpose that they see in be getting elected is to deliver for their donors and to cut taxes and when that's not on the table when you have a democrat as the president and a democratic senate what is the purpose that republicans serve there's no purpose for them except to bitch and moan and get attention and fight amongst themselves. Their inability to govern is obvious in the fact that they've now had, I don't know how many House speakers or Republican leaders they've had over the last 20 years. Like, say what you want about the Democrats. And, I mean, the fact that Nancy Pelosi was speaker for so long made, like, I would say... Uh, it created a, a lot of issues within the party. Um, I mean, and I would say that it created some deep recalcitrance and inability to respond to the changing times. But it was borne out by like their desire to keep the machine moving and make it well oiled. Um, and the fact that she was a big bundler and donor and there are other incentives. But you can just see there's a there's a complete difference. Um, Every time Republicans want a new leader, it's like this wonderkind, it's it's Tim, it's a uh, it's Paul Ryan, it's whoever, um, whoever is going to appeal to the base in the current moment. And what are the base's desires? No one really even freaking knows. Um, but Sam made this point yesterday. There is an undercurrent of urgency because there's no one in the there's no uh one in the world more pro-israel than the average republican representative in congress and uh they need to get back from their perspective to deliver for apac and and get those get those weapons over there get those weapons over there to israel so they can bomb some more palestinian children um that is creating some level of urgency and then just like the domestic political reality of we look like clowns we can't figure our crap out it doesn't look good for them, but it's fun for me. I mean, been a tough, a tough, tough, tough week of news, but I will always take Republican infighting. I mean, honestly, it's like it's like bread at a restaurant. I'm always going to say yes. I'm always going to say yes to that.